A pivotal year for Clark Lee in Nashville awaits. And this is my key three-game stretch that I believe will help define who the Vanderbilt Commodores are in the 2024 college football season. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Phillips of SEC Unfiltered. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Make sure you check out the podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us across all social media channels as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. We're brought to you by our friends over at MyBookie, guys. Head over to MyBookie.ag. Use promo code SECU at sign up to receive a special welcome offer on your first deposit, a 100% deposit match of up to $1,000. So, again, that's MyBookie.ag. Promo code SECU to get your special welcome offer today. The Vanderbilt Commodores have their sights set on the 2024 college football season, and this is a big year for Clark Lee, because guys, believe it or not, even in Nashville, even at Vanderbilt, there's pressure. There's pressure to win in the SEC on all 16 campuses. Now, what does that look like for each individual school? Certainly, Vandy's not expected to go out there and win 10 or 11 games or compete for the college football playoff, but getting to five wins, maybe getting to six, sniffing a bowl game, having a chance, and when you lose, not looking so pathetic like you did last year, right? That's all we're asking for. Nothing crazy. So when you look at Vanderbilt's 2024 schedule, which we're going to bring up in just a moment, it is so critical for this Vanderbilt football team. There's a key three-game stretch here, the most important three-game stretch, that I think is going to help define who Vanderbilt is this season and if they're going to have any chance of getting to that six-win mark. So. As we look at Vandy's schedule, and it is, of course, a gauntlet. And one of the things that makes it a gauntlet, number one, it's the SEC. But number two, when you're Vanderbilt and you have the type of roster that Vanderbilt has, it makes it incredibly tough, right? There's a number of different directions you can go here, though. It is an interesting schedule. I look late in the season, right? At Auburn, South Carolina at home, and at LSU. If you're going to get an SEC win, guys, I think it's going to come in this stretch, right? What are the Auburn Tigers going to be this year? South Carolina at home. That streak's been going on forever. Could you snap that streak? At LSU, that's a long shot. But either Auburn or South Carolina, and ironically enough, those in back-to-back weeks, I think that's probably where you find your lone SEC win or find an SEC win if you're going to get it this season. You can go earlier in the year, right? Maybe the games against Bama at Kentucky and Ball State. Can you go two and one in that stretch? Is it possible? Is it possible to go two and one in that stretch? Could you show some positive signs of life, God forbid, against the Alabama Crimson Tide? Doubtful, but maybe. But guys, where my attention goes for the Vanderbilt Commodores, because I think you have to keep things realistic. Like, if I'm talking to the fine folks in Nashville, if I'm talking to the Vandy administration, if I'm talking to the higher-ups who are going to make the decisions on Clark Lee, here's the thing. There's pressure in Nashville. There's no question. There's pressure to win at every single SEC campus. There's just too much money, and there's too much at stake to not have expectations, even at a school like Vandy. But you have to be realistic with Clark Lee, and you have to be realistic with what this program is and where it is at this current state. So, what are realistic expectations, Randy? Maybe this is a different conversation for a different day, but I think it goes a long way to determining what the key three-game stretch is as well. Is getting to three and nine, getting to four and eight, is getting to five and seven realistic? Maybe six and six is realistic, and I'm underselling Vanderbilt football. But I think more than more likely than not, a successful season at Vandy would be winning these non-conference games and finding a way to steal an SEC win. If you can get to five and seven, guys, I think you had a really, really good year in Nashville. And you can't do that unless you take care of business in non-conference. So my key three-game stretch, the most important three-game stretch, the three-game stretch I think is going to define who Vandy's going to be, it's the first three games of the season. Virginia Tech at home in the season opener, which Vatek is going to be a very good football team, I think, this year. But that's an interesting game. 
Could it potentially be an upset? Could you catch Vitek off guard? Then you have Alcorn State, and then you got to go to Georgia State. Alcorn State, you should win, right? That's a dub. Let's go ahead and give it to them. At Georgia State, it's going to be tricky. And I'll tell you this, guys, right now, if Sean Elliott was still at Georgia State, of course, he left there to take the tight ends coach position at South Carolina, the running game coordinator, whatever. If he was still there as the head coach and there wasn't so much uncertainty in Atlanta, I'd probably take Georgia State right now to win the football game. But if you're Vandy, can you come out of that stretch? Can you start the season two and one? That's the question, right? If you at least start the season two and one, and let's say you give Vatek some more headaches than folks are expecting. If you start the season two and one, you're at least setting yourself up with a sliver of confidence going into SEC play where maybe, just maybe, you can make something happen. Unfortunately, your first two SEC games are at Mizzou and Alabama. So it's going to be tough, right? At least out the gate. But then you go to Kentucky. Then you have Ball State at home, which we expect that to be a win. Certainly don't sleep on Ball State, but we expect it to be a win. Then you got the tough game following against Texas. Then I mentioned, guys, at Auburn, South Carolina, at LSU, and then Tennessee to close it out. So if Vandy's going to have any chance, if they're going to have any chance of doing anything, you have to start off on the right foot. You have to start off on the right foot. I mean, guys, when we're talking most important game, not to spoil it because we're going to get into that series here shortly, here very soon, the most important game of any might be Georgia State. It, it, it might be. It really might be. Because, I mean, it goes without saying, if you can't beat Georgia State, well, you can basically forget about winning an SEC game, right? You got to be able to get off on the right foot, on a positive note. That starts in these first three weeks. Vatek, Alcorn State, Georgia State. And who knows? Maybe you start this college football season off with a bang and you can take down Vatek. Maybe. I'm certainly not picking it, but maybe. Find a way to go two and one in this stretch. You at least give yourself a chance, a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, some positive can come of this season. So, guys, when you look at Vanderbilt's 2024 schedule, What's the key three-game stretch that stands out? What's the most important three-game stretch? Is it a three-game stretch that's in SEC play? Do you look at the first three weeks and say, no, no, that's not it at all. It's something else. Do you agree or disagree with my assessment? When it comes to Clark Lee and Vandy, what are your thoughts? What's the key three-game stretch that's going to help define who the Commodores are in the 2024 season? Guys, it's going to do off me. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Check out the podcast wherever you get podcasts. You can find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. Until next time, guys, I'm Chris Phillips of SEC Unfiltered. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in, and we'll catch you on the other side.